Today, I build a farm that will get me lots and lots of ender pearls. I also begin my quest for the elusive brown panda by creating a selective breeding program. And I build a machine that allows you to teleport thousands of blocks just by pressing a button completely in vanilla survival. And I also built a giant futuristic building to go with it. First, I'd like to visit a brand new place. To do this, I'm gonna need some eyes of ender. And if I now fly towards spawn, I should be able to throw another eye of ender and it will show me the nearest stronghold. It says it's in this direction, so that's where we're going. It could be anywhere around here. Let's see if I've gone past it. Okay, yeah, I have flown over it. I know this is a massive waste, but I've always wanted to do this. Let's just throw loads of eyes of ender and see what happens. According to my calculations, it's right about here. Now we dig straight down and find the stronghold. And look at this, it connects to a mine shaft. And diamonds in a chest. Well, I know I'd, what I say about diamonds, but it's pretty cool to find them. And then we find the portal room. Also feel like I should keep the spawner for a change because they are kind of rare. Now add the eyes of ender and through we go. I may use that stronghold as one of my projects, but we'll have to see. Also, people think that message that comes on screen about no home bed means I died. It, it just means I went through an end portal. My turtle leg's still haven't hatched but that one's still furiously laying them and now I can begin my next project which begins with gathering lots and lots of ender pearls yes I do have a wither rose farm but I'm going to create something much better than that here's all the items that I'm going to need time to head to the end so I believe the best place to build this is going to be this way and what I want to do here is place a bucket of lava and once that's got to the bottom we're going to put water right here and that's going to turn it all into cobblestone and I could now be extremely careful and just float to the bottom using water and all that kind of thing but eh, that sounds a bit boring so instead we're we're going to do something like uh oh, uh oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that was not part of the plan. If we just do that, there we go, no problem. And now we can fill this up with ladders. Maybe I should avoid doing things like that since my entire livelihood depends on not dying in this world. I've now bridged far enough away to avoid any Enderman from spawning. Let's now build a platform. Also, the reason Enderman farms are built as close to the void as possible because mob spawning happens in the world from bottom to top, so the lower the farm, the better the rate. Now I'm going to very carefully use my water to make a platform underneath. And this is going to be storage for all the ender pearls I'm going to get. So I've got a chest like this, one here and one here, with some more on this side as well. And then these can feed into more chests underneath with hoppers like that. I'd also like to change this block right there, do this, and then we can add some ladders to get out. And these hoppers are going to go like that. And we'll kind of do something like this so that it alternates to both sides. Now we're going to build a little bit of a roof for this so that no enderman can get down to me. And that is the platform complete. And if we add double carpet on top, it will stop enderman from teleporting here. And now we're going to build a chamber that goes high up enough so that they Endermen take loads of damage. Now the chamber is complete up to the right height, but before I can go any further, I'm going to need some ender pearls. Thankfully, with the looting effect, that's pretty easy to get. I now have 14. Yeah, that's going to be enough. Now I just need to build this giant platform. As you can see, the farm is working quite nicely. We've got loads of endermen. However, I have run out of blocks, so I'm just going to pop home and get some more. There we go. That should be plenty of stone. And now back to building. There we go. Perfect. Now let's put trap doors along here and then build up one, two, three with an iron bar and a carpet. And I'm going to get a minecart right here and I need to spawn an endermite. Okay, hopefully that still works. Okay, finally we got an endermite. That took way, way too long. I'm going to take off my thorns armor so that I don't defeat it. Just realized that before it can be in a minecart, you have to name tag it first. There we go. Now to get it in that minecart. Perfect. Let's break some blocks so it goes down there. Also needs a carpet on top of it. Okay, well, that was a, a useful totem. I ran out of carpet, so I'm just stealing them from down here. But this one is going to go on top of him. And that should be the farm complete. All the Endermen seem pretty angry at me. But yeah, they're going to run to attack the Endermite, fall down, and I can just take them out down here. As you can see, this is a great way to get loads of Ender Pearls. So what I'm going to do is AFK here for a bit and fill up all the chests with Ender Pearls. And it looks like now I have all the Ender Pearls that I could ever need. I think every single chest is completely full. So I'm going to fill up this shulker box and this one as well. And if I need any more pearls, I'll get them later. Now for this next project, it could be one of my hardest challenges yet. Now I brought this panda right here back home. But now I want the very rare brown panda. Only problem is there's a 1 in 64 chance of one randomly spawning. And finding 64 pandas would be extremely, extremely difficult. So instead it's time for plan B. Which is to breed loads of pandas and hope I get enough mutations that I get a brown one. Yeah, for some reason you need a degree in biology to understand panda breeding in Minecraft. I'm struggling to find pandas. I've probably got a better chance if I get a bamboo jungle. So I'm going to try and find one of those. In the meantime, I can visit pyramids like this. I thought I was going to MLG there. But try and find a notch apple. Here's the second one and a second disappointment. Here's the third, the fourth, the fifth, and here we have the sixth, the seventh, 
Here's the eighth. And we've got it. There we go. Okay, we managed to get another one. Hey, the eighth temple got me the eighth notch apple. But the search for a bamboo forest continues. Finally, I found a bamboo forest. Next on the agenda, track down some pandas. We've got two right here. And if I dig a bit of a hole and lure them into it, perfect. I then need to plant some bamboo around them. And the breeding process can be started. And now there's not much else I can do except breed loads and loads of these guys. I worked out because this panda here is a playful one, the hidden gene is playful, which is pretty good in my chance to get a brown panda. I just have to get lucky with the mutation. And pandas that are of no use to me can come through here. The breeding continues. I expect us to have hundreds and hundreds of pandas before we get what we want. This is another playful one, so you're coming through here. Let's breed some more and see what happens. I did not expect panda breeding to be this complicated. I bred loads of pandas down here and they've all now been released. And from there, I got two weak pandas and bred loads and loads and loads of them. Then every five minutes, I would breed some more pandas and end up with loads of baby ones. Now there is a one in 32 chance for a panda to randomly mutate. And if it has mutated, I'll be able to tell because it will look different. You see, this guy is a mutant. So we'd put him in a boat, okay? Just like that. And all the rest of these baby ones, well, we'll just get rid of... No, I'm kidding, don't worry. All the babies will come this way towards the trap doors and <laughs> in with all the other pandas. And one day they will be released. Now, all of these pandas are mutants and one in eight mutant pandas has a brown panda gene. So one of these has probably got the brown panda gene. And if I was to breed two of those together, I've got a one in four chance of getting a brown panda. Yeah, this is that's how stupid it is. I'm, I'm taking a break. This video isn't about breeding pandas. It's about making a teleporter. So let's do something else. I also think I stopped pandas from being an endangered species. Also, guys, we're on a quest for three million subscribers. So please, if you enjoyed the video, can you subscribe? Because I basically spent my whole life playing Minecraft to make these videos. But hey, it's worth it for you guys. I'm going to grab some magenta dye and use it on this shulker box full of ender pearls because I just feel like that's a more fitting colour. Not entirely sure why though because ender pearls are green. And the next thing I'm going to build is a teleportation station. Right about here should be the perfect spot. To build this we're going to need quite a lot of quartz. Although on second thoughts I'd like to make it out of concrete. But to make concrete you need gravel. And all of my gravel has been placed down here. So if I spend a bit of time draining this monument then I'll be able to get back some more gravel. And there we go this is pretty much all drained now. Next I can start getting rid of gravel. And with this I can make more concrete. And also some white concrete. And now to begin building this. And of course, we're going to be going big, which means I have to get rid of things like trees. And I also need to fill in areas like this. This right here is the beginnings of the building. It's, <laughs> it's not looking very impressive, is it? But don't worry, once it's finished, it'll look a lot better. Another day of building, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really sure if it's coming together or not. But one thing I do know is that I need more concrete powder. That's eight more stacks of each. That should be enough for now. A little more progress. I've added a bit of a roof, but it needs more detail. Next, I'm going to gather up a bunch of dandelions. 18 is definitely enough. And with that, I can make yellow concrete. Now we're going to add strips of yellow concrete like this. This is quite exciting. I never get to use these for builds, but I'm, I'm going to use some scaffolding. That way, adding the strips is going to be much easier. There we go. Let's break all of these. And now I want to do the same thing up there. There we go. The front is complete and I had a change of heart and <laughs> decided to use magenta instead. Next, I'm going to expand out these sides. What do you think, guys? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm building. Another side is now complete, but I'm pretty much out of gravel, so I'm going to go and get some more, which means draining more water. And there we go. Another one is done. Now to get more gravel. Now I've got plenty of gravel in here, plenty of inventory, and also in this shulker box. Now I can craft more white concrete and get back to building. Now that every side is done, work can begin on the back. And there we have it. The back has also been finished. Finished. I just need to improve this roof a bit. I'm going to start that by adding loads of concrete. In this middle bit, I'm going to create like a little extra roof part. The walls of this little thing is complete. Now I'm just going to add a bit of a roof on this. There we go. That's now covered up. I'm also just going to slightly adjust this. And now it looks something like this. <laughs> I have no idea about that bit of the design. But I do know I can bring some beams around like this. And I can also do the same at the front as well. There we go. It's starting to come together, but I... <laughs> feel like it needs a little bit extra. And for that, I'm going to cook some chorus fruit and then create a load of end rods. These can be placed in the corners just to give it even more of a futuristic vibe. I'll also add some along the top of here. Am I happy with this building? I mean, it's definitely something different to everything else. The only thing I want to do is slightly change the front design because at the moment it looks like an end, which makes no sense. And then I'll be ready to create the teleporter on the inside. Took a while, but the front is now redone. Now I need to do something about this interior. To start with, I'm just going to fill in these walls a little bit more. I've decided to fill in these walls all the way around and then along here I'm going to create a border of red concrete with glass inside that and then if I grab a load of lava perfect that is now complete although I have decided that I'd like to move this wall here in by one because just having that black on the wall looks a bit strange there we go I'm liking the look of this all this snow needs to be removed I think iron blocks are going to be useful since I can place those in the floor and then put yellow concrete as a border inside those and along here is where the buttons shall be for the teleporter I'm not entirely sure what I've done with my treasure shulker box I think I've left it with the panel 
Alexander. So I'm, uh, I'm going to borrow some of these diamonds. Then these will be placed on here like so with amethyst underneath. I also want to dig this out and place iron blocks like this and the same on the other side because I plan to put beacons on both sides. Along here will be six buttons which will extend the correct piston which will then activate these observers and then using repeaters I can separate out all the six different signals. I realise the best system is going to be just to alternate them on both sides. Then we place a block there with a sticky piston and connected to the piston we need 11 honey blocks. And on the bottom one I'm going to place redstone then a temporary block and then a piston and if I get rid of that block the, the, the piston should move back up. I didn't realise I had the ability to break pistons. For some reason I have to add the piston first and then the redstone block. But below this piston we're going to add more. Okay, why is it so weird? Apparently pistons can be powered through midair now so instead we're going to go one block lower and add another 11 honey blocks. Once again a block of redstone and a piston two blocks under it. I finally worked out a fix for the issues I'm having. If I instead put a piece of redstone dust on top of the piston now when it goes like that it extends and it goes back up. Now I shall extend this chamber all the way down to bedrock. Although to do that I'm going to need more sticky pistons. There we go, we can craft loads. I think I've now got all the items I need to finish this build, except for a load of iron blocks. What I've managed to do is connect this room to the room where I battled all the withers. So this is probably a good place to build a portal, since the only way I can send a redstone signal thousands of blocks is going to be using portals. If I try doing it without portals, then as soon as the signal went outside a render distance, it just wouldn't work. The way I will do this is create a portal, but I won't go through it. Instead I first build one on the other side that will perfectly link because I've just divided the coordinates by eight. As you can see, links up perfectly. The Y value is very important, but it's very important that they're both the same value anyway. So we're going to place a dropper there that's going to send an item through the portal, which is why I put a hopper and a barrel on top of that so that we never run out of items. And when that item comes through, it will load the chunks, the hopper will pick it up, and the comparator will get a signal. And then I just have to dig along until I go into the next chunk. And at this far edge, I'm going to build another portal. Once again, going into this portal is going to be a dropper, and there's going to be a hopper into the back of that with a barrel on top. And once again, I'm not going to go through the portal, but he said I'm going to multiply the coordinates by eight and build a portal there that perfectly corresponds. And if you can understand all that, then I'll be very impressed. This right here is the spot. There is water around, but I don't think it's going to get in my way too much. Once again, we're going to have a barrel with a hopper and a comparator coming out of that. You also see that if I use this portal, it connects perfectly to this one right here. And I also need to add a redstone line that goes all the way into this dispenser. And if I do something to activate the wire, you'll hear the dispenser go off and the barrel has picked it up. Look at that. <laughs> Just found some diamonds. Well, <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's diamonds everywhere. Although I am building a teleportation device, so I don't think I have to worry about them. The biggest thing you have to remember when doing this is never go through a portal until you link it. Otherwise, things will go disastrously wrong. Now I just have to repeat this a load of times until I get to where I need to be. I also think there comes a point where it makes more sense to fly to the next location instead of strip mining hundreds of blocks. This right here is the spot. And now this section is also complete. We've got to a point where we've come far enough this way on the Z, so instead we're going to turn a right angle and move along the X axis now. And let's build the next portal right here. Here. And I believe this right here is the final portal that I need to build. And the corresponding portal for this is going to be at 0, 0. This probably isn't the last time that I'll ever do this, but as long as it's the last time today, then I'm happy. Before I add the part at this end that will actually teleport you, I'm just going to test that all the redstone connects up. If it doesn't work, I'm, I'm just going to give up. The first thing I must do is fill all these barrels with items, and I felt like nuggets is going to be the best one. Basically, the amount of items that are in the dropper is the amount of times this machine can be used. All of the droppers have now been successfully loaded. So in theory, when I push this button, it should extend a piston at spawn. This really is going to be a moment of truth. An item went out of this dropper, so the first part worked. Of course, guys, something went wrong. On the positive side, there's diamonds over there. I'll get this working and I'll let you know when I'm done. And the reason it didn't work is because the item landed on top of here, so I guess I need to add extra blocks to make sure that doesn't happen. Here we go with take two. Take two didn't work because I was missing a piece of redstone. But my third attempt, it worked. It actually worked. Well, now we've got this far, I can begin building the ender pearl stasis chamber. First thing I'm going to do is send the redstone signal upwards by once again using pistons and and honey blocks. If you crouch to the side of honey block, you can still jump. On top of this will be a redstone block and a piston right here. We're going to break that and thankfully going downwards, it's, it's not glitchy. I've made it all the way up, but this is where I can build the stasis chamber. All this can also be patched up if I can get some dirt. And to finish the stasis chamber, I'm going to need a few more materials such as water, a bit of kelp, loads of ender pearls and a bit of this as well. So let's dig down about six blocks place this and then I need to just get out of here. Then I'm going to plant loads of kelp. So now it's a proper bubble column. The redstone current can also go into this dropper. This dropper can be filled with ender pearls. And now if I throw one ender pearl down there, this is now trapped in stasis. It is stuck up and down. Okay, well, I'm not meant to walk into it. But as long as nothing touches it, <laughs> it is trapped in stasis. But notice what would happen if I activated the redstone. Look at that teleports me straight up and all that's left me to do now is to see if it works all the way from my house. Okay, here we go. I'm going to press the button. It's going to take a little while for the signal to go. Nothing's happened. 
<laughs> something's gone wrong. I don't know how, but one of the nuggets didn't go in the hopper, so I'm going to have to do something like that to try and stop that. Take two. It worked. Hang on a minute. It worked. I pushed it a second time, but I think it worked the first time. It just took longer than I thought. Whenever I use this machine, I can just throw another one in and then it's going to be permanently loaded and waiting. This time I'm going to time it. I'm going to see how long it takes from me pushing the button to get all the way there. There we go. It was in 12 seconds. I can get from my house to here in 12 seconds. That's insane. It's roughly the equivalent of traveling 100 blocks per second. I do want to add a system so I can push a button and just go straight back to my house. But for now, I'm going to go and repair my tools. I think that's well deserved. But now that this machine is done, I want to create a way to teleport back just by pushing a button here. And I'm pretty sure all I have to do with that is just mirror the same redstone system on the other side. I'll do some testing and find out. If that doesn't work, then I'll have to build more portals to do the same thing. I ran a quick test, sent 100 block through and the redstone did push this block so now it's time to get redstone in part of me finds this difficult to believe but it is completely working the system back also sends a redstone signal i placed this piston here as a test run and it worked fine what i'm going to do next is make a current that goes all the way back this way and this won't be quite as fast as using honey blocks and pistons so i'm going to send a pulse using these all the way to the top that has a piston here which will extend when the current comes up now i'm going to place this here and add iron in all the walls and the same for the floor and a bit of water with kelp to set up this dropper i'm going to do something like this with a redstone dust on top. Let's completely fill this up. And you think the machine worked perfectly, but uh, still not quite. Because this stasis chamber is in this chunk. However, this portal is one chunk too far away for the entity to load. At the moment, it'll only load redstone. So what I need to do is create some sort of chunk loader right here. Kind of nice link. I'm just going to stick a dropper right here. This will connect like that. And in theory, sending an item through here should be enough to load the chunk. Now to test it out. And once I push this button in about 12, 15 seconds, I should teleport. I have. Okay, <laughs> we've made it both ways. Time to test it out. So if I press this button, it will teleport me all the way to spawn. And then if I drop down this hole and push this button, it will take me back to my house. I'm also going to add a second pulse here so that the two currents go through just to try and make it a little bit more consistent so it works every single time. And the final thing is to add a button right here, which will return me back home. And I think using lots of observers is the way that I want to do this again, which means gathering up some quartz to make a load more observers and also crafting more repeaters. So I'm going to do something like this all the way down to level 12. And that's going to connect to some redstone. I've hooked up all the redstone. So I think if I push this button... Yep, it's going to send two pulses through. And there we go. I've been teleported. But in theory, now this button should connect everything up and work well. Yep, I've made it back up. I cannot believe I actually built a working teleporter in Minecraft. Eventually, I'd like all these buttons to take me to different places, but I'm not going to build another one today, that's for sure. Instead, I'm going to fly over to my house, grab some red stained glass and some orange stained glass, as well as yellow concrete. And then I can add my beacons in here. I won't be able to add the actual beacons until I find my treasure chest, but I can still add the redstone that's going to make this work. So when I push this button, it's going to activate all these observers so let us go do something like that and that's going to extend this piston which is going to start a hopper clock although in reality if i want to make a hopper clock i might just need some hoppers there we go are you kidding me really Okay, I, I might just get teleported here because the, the creepers probably set something off. Yep, I did. <laughs> As I was saying, an observer is going to go like that, which will start a simple hopper clock, and that hooks up to this piston. The redstone for all this does now seem to be complete. Final thing to do is come up here and dig a hole here so that the beacon can come straight up, then do the same thing on this side. Now I want to borrow a couple of random beacons, place one there and one there. Now if I just temporarily put this redstone here, yep, both the beacons activate. Now I'll just repair these two observers, and it's probably going to teleport me. Although it didn't, which is actually quite handy because now I can properly test it out. The beacon to activate, that's good. And I have got teleported. I just need to make the beacon beams a little bit longer, which can be done by moving this repeater and adding more blocks. 46 to be exact. Now for the final test. There we have it. It worked perfectly. The beacons didn't last too long. I'm just so proud of the machine that I've built. In other news, we still have many turtle eggs left to hatch, as well as a few escaped turtles and, and one in a minecart. Not sure what's going on there, but I'll leave them to it. Let's replace this concrete, add a bit of a board around this to hide it, and finally some torches to light up the place. And as the sun sets on this world, that was 1,500 days in Hardcore Minecraft.